Welcome once again to Little By Them, an East Coast mainline depiction, very fast section of the East Coast mainline on Stoke Bank in the summer of 1958. Now in this presentation I'm going to be showing you Little By Them's sequence. Now this is based on working timetables and passenger timetables from the summer of 1958. And what I've done, or what we've done, is to produce a sequence on flip cards which goes through to something over 50 moves in two and a half hours. And I hope you'll see when the moving footage begins how we've managed, I hope, to recreate at least some, some of those wonderful trains from BR's final steam passage. After a couple of stock moves, the first through train is this York to King's Cross empty stock train. It's hauled by the K3, and you can see the prototype picture, 61812, one of the few that retained a great Northern tender into BR days. And the train is a mixture of kit-built stock, some of which has appeared in BRM. And the signal and telegraph guys appear to be working. A Peterborough, Doncaster, all-station stopper hauled by an A5 working out its days from Grantham Shed. Now this beautiful model, beautiful loco, was built, painted and weathered by Tony Geary. The train is a mixture of my build, Tony's build and modified proprietary. And like most of these all station stoppers, it's made up of almost anything that could turn a wheel. In Nottingham, King's Cross, semi-fast. This originated at Nottingham and then took the line to Grantham, where it ran all stations to Peterborough, and at Peterborough the train was expanded and ran up to town as an express. But here it's got a Nottingham based K2. Once again, the train a mixture of my work, Tony Geary's work, and The Last Carriage by John Holden. A typical working Note please as well that all the signals work. Next stop Essendine for this, then Tallington, and then Peterborough. The first express of the day, the down morning talisman. This originates here from one of the kickback sidings and it's propelled into position and increases speed as it gets into the right road. It's absolutely essential that all stock can be propelled and pulled with equal ease. This train is made up entirely of modified Backman Mark I. And the loco Backman body, southeastern fine cast tender, southeastern fine cast chassis, all painted beautifully by Ian Rathbone. The first up morning express. Its route is set by the time honoured method of electric pencil. No DCC here, I'm afraid so we have isolating sections and, as appropriate, a Copley Hill-based A1 
built from the DJH kit. This was a very mixed train through the 50s and into the 60s and it included some of the original articulated cars from the pre-war train of the same name. Sections would come from Bradford, from Leeds and at some time from Sheffield. Train a mixture of kit built and modified proprietary items. Like the rest really. The Down White Rose, again originating from the kickback siding. Called by a favourite Pacific of mine, Bass A3, 60062 Minaru. Built from a southeastern fine cast kit and painted by Jeff Haynes. Train mainly modified Backman Mark 1s with a catering core supplied by kit built items, Gresley kit built items, which was typical of the time the Mark 1 catering cars rode so badly, and the Bradford portion at the end. Fully fitted freight originating in Doncaster, then on its way to New England to be remarshaled for points further south and east. Fiddle Yard allows completely flexible working. This train originated in the up slow roads, but via this crossover it now appears on the up fast road. Very heavy train and a most appropriate locomotive, a Thompson A23 Pacific, built from a DJH kit and painted by Ian Rathbone. I hope I got the photograph of it passing by. That's me, by the way, standing on the platform. A miniature me, thanks to modern. And on entrance into the fill yard, it uses the crossover to regain the up slow side of it. Complete flexibility. A pair of down and up respective empty and full minerals. The down one originates from the kickback side of it. Once again, essential that all these wagons can be propelled over quite complex track work without binding, buffer locking or derailing. And a kit built, a new cast kit built 023. And off she goes on the down slope. We have a Midland and Great Northern train passing west to east and it goes over the up full minerals. This train originating from Colic, all by a 9F built from a DJH kit as the down train enters the scenic section. Now very often these trains would stop and crews would exchange, it being possible then to get back to New England, say, or back to Colic, say, for the respective crews within a shift. These two are just carrying on. Trains, by the way, are made mainly from kit builds from a variety of friends. and the 9F heads underneath Marsh Bridge on its way south. It'll run up slow all the way to New England. The down train re-enters its kick back siding. You can see the other trains to the left.
up and down respective stoppers. Now this was the only occasion when three trains were in Little Bythen station at once. This one originates on the up fast road but gains the up slow via the crossover and comes to a halt hauled by a Coopercraft B123, one of only three in the whole universe that actually works. Once the train has stopped, it's isolated and will no longer run until the switch is pulled again. And the King's Cross to Grantham stopper pulls in, hauled by an X-Works V2, built from a Newcast kit and painted by Jeff Haynes. In 1958, the only mainline diesels in operation on the East Coast mainline with the original 10, or rather 5 should I say, because 5 are on the Great Eastern English Electric Type 4s, and here we have one D207, a modified Lima item by my elder son Tom when he was 15, by the way that's 25 years ago, and it's on the Upmaster Cutler, Sheffield King's Cross, originally on the Great Central Main Line in 1958 it became a Pullman service running on the Great Northern via Retford. And here it is going back into its respective kickback siding. Peg goes off, slow to fast. Our down stopper departs. Gain the train made up of mixture of kit builds by myself and Tony Geary. And the up train. Off it goes. Next stop, Essendine. The Leicester heads west on the M and GM, just as combined York and Hull Up Express dashes south. The train was fully made up in Doncaster, and the train engine, a York A22 would have pulled the train from York and then all the way to King's Cross. Note the prototype picture for reference. The Flying Scotsman, the Down Flying Scotsman, typically hauled by an A1, in this case yet another DJH A1, built by me, painted by Ian Rathbone, trained mainly modified back from Mark 1. And note please, the A1 is roller bearing fitted. And away she goes, just after a Nottingham King's Lynn stopper on the MGA. The fast mauling Newcastle King's Cross Express portions from Time Commission Key and also from Saltburn, hauled by a Heaton A23, kept built by me from DJH, painted by Ian Rathburn. And note in this train, please, the X Silver Jubilee triplet catering set. It's a high speed line, this, and the trains run fast, even into the fiddle yard, but as they enter their respective sidings, throttle is eased and we come in at a nice sedate pace. Essential that good running is always there. Not all the trains are huge. In this case a little Essendine to Grantham. Not quite a pickup but just a local freight and note the tractors provided by my good friend Ray Chesham. There was a tractor factory at Essendine they built Alice Chalmers, or erected Alice Chalmers tractors there, but I'm told these are not Alice Chalmers tractors. K1, by the way, DMR kit, built by me, painted by me, weathered by Tom Foster. Somebody will know what those tractors are. A Leeds Express, King's Cross Leeds Extra, all by yet another DJHA1. 
made up of all sorts of cars, in this case 14, all kit built and very, very heavy. There is a sequence for the M and GN as well, made up principally of nine trains, but when friends come, we could end up with 99 trains, such as the flexibility. Anyway, a wheezing J6 heads a mixed freight westwards. The Up Yorkshire Pullman. Coming from its kickback siding, there are two through roads in the fiddle yard, one for the up, one for the down. Road 1, which this is, is the up, and on the far side, road 19 for the down. It starts off, obviously, on the up slow roads, but by the time it goes underneath the M and GN, it's on the up fast. This train originated from Harrogate, Leeds, Bradford and York and was made up fully, oh there was a Hall portion as well, made up fully in Doncaster Station, hauled by the Leeds train engine. And Bongrass, Bongrass by the way, not Bongrace, it's French, arrives back in the Pilliard under my attention. I hope I'm paying attention. Points are changed and the whole 11 car rake reverses back into its kickback sidings. Without this complete reliability running the sequence on Little Bither would be impossible. Derailments, stuttering, mistakes, well, mistakes are tolerated, but not the others. A mixed freight, and on its way northwards, all by a DGH austerity. Again, the train mainly kit builds, some modified proprietary, some made by me, painted weathered by me and many by friends. Now this has come from a road which holds two trains, long enough for two, and once it's cleared the slave controller powers the following one. Now it's going to be put inside so the train has slowed right down, the bobby, the signalman, has instructed the driver that he's going to be put inside, so the signal under those circumstances need not be pulled off. It's going to be put inside on the down slow lay-by. So underneath the M and GN or Midland actually at this point, Girder Bridge, slowing right down. The presence of a brick wagon suggests that it's on its way to either Doncaster or York to be repaired. Bogey brick wagons generally only worked south of Peterborough, but Doncaster and York were the principal wagon repair facilities for this line. Now note the little ground doll, please. Made by Roy Vinter. Now most of these work, like this one. The little ground doll has been cleared and the train reverses. That leading wagon is probably on its last journey. Again, please note, and I hope this isn't perceived as being boastful, everything has to run perfectly, particularly like this in reverse, because this train has proper screw-link couplings. The road is set to normal and the loco is isolated. Just as the down Queen of Scots rolls regally by, 
A1s were the most common form of motive power, and here we have Kestrel, built from a DJH kit painted by Ian Rathbone, on the service. And please note the end board. The fastest of the lot, Malha, on the down Northumbria. Very often, depending on the season, horse boxes would be provided as the leading vehicle in a train, as here. And please note the triplet set, which is the X-1938 Flying Scotsman Trio. Early diesels were not that reliable, although this class wasn't that bad. Anyway, it's on its way from Hornsey to Doncaster for repair. Another down empties, this time hauled by an O1, a kit built O1. Of course now Hornby produces a very fine model of the same thing. Now the sharp eyed will note that this down train, this down empty mint, is really the same as the one you saw earlier hauled by the 023 but mineral trains wouldn't have had a consist as such, just wagons that would run as necessary. So the two minerals, the empty going north and the pools going south, actually work twice in the sequence. I don't have space for four mineral trains. Anyway, with those other trains having gone, off goes the one from the lay-by. Many of these wagons will be going for repair or redistribution. A scene long gone from our railway, a mixed goods like this, including even a couple of great western ones. Look at that ancient hopper car, hopper wagon really, car is far too great a description and the train runs back into the fiddle yard, into road 20. The road it left earlier, long enough to accommodate two full-length trains. Through the section switching, it will stop automatically, and you can see the train ahead of it. Grantham Peterborough pickup goods taken by a Hornby B1 modified Hornby B1 modified by me weathered by Tom Foster left its kickback siding and now it comes through through road one note the spare engines scattered everywhere I'm running out of space Now, I'm not a fan of shunting. For those who love it, you're not going to get very much from this presentation. Pickup would run daily and it would pick up, as is its name, or set down as appropriate. Now, I've just reasoned today that it has nothing to pick up and nothing to set down. As I say, I'm not a fan of shunting. However, in the working timetable, it's scheduled to spend some time at Little By Them, so it reverses into the up lay-by. Where it will wait, and the crew can watch the passage of an Ivert flying pig heading from Nottingham to the Norfolk coast. This line ceased to exist at the beginning of 1959. Dringhouses York to New England fully fitted freight coming out from its kickback siding 
again essential that everything works perfectly. Piddlyard points are fired by solar noise. Loka gets the road and off she goes. In this case running along the up slope. The Loco, a York based B16-3. In fact, at one time, all the B16s were based at York. Built from an old Newcast kit on a scratch-built set of cranes and painted very well by Jeff Haynes. Again, the train, made mainly up from kits and a variety of sources, keep repeating myself. Running as fully fitted. Fast fish. Now this could have originated in Scotland, in that case it would have had a V2, so it's probably come from the Yorkshire or Lincolnshire fish ports, or by a B1, note the prototype picture. Very, very dirty. This lovely model is the work of Tony Geary, and the whole train made from kits by Rob Davey. Note the swingers attached somewhere along the journey. West Riding King's Cross Express, hauled by a near 50-year-old Wills A3 on a scratch-built chassis, towing a Jameson tender. Note the little wing deflectors. Unsuccessful wing deflectors fitted to four of this class on receipt of their double chimney and VR days. Train, another mixture, mainly made by Tony Geary, some made by me. Certain trains are provided in cassettes, and this is the next one. A Doncaster Peterborough all station stopper. You'll notice here a spring loaded hand operated point. For safety reasons, I depress the spring and propel the carriages of the train onto road one, which is the up through route. Once the spring is released. I'm free to push the carriages into position and then select a loco. In this case, it'll be a Doncaster Works running in turn. A Scottish based A2. Off she goes. Now, this loco would have sent the local spotters whooping with delight. A Dundee Tay Bridge allocated single chimney Scottish A2. A real rarity, except on a job like this at Little Biden, a running in turn. Built from a DJH kit, painted by Ian Rathbone. And the train again, a mixture of my work, and in this case, John Holden. And note the rear carriage, the brake, the wrong way round as it were. Quite common on the East Coast Main Line at the time. And off 
Tudor minstrel goes. It'll go to King's Cross, eventually, I would imagine, then back to Doncaster. When they were happy with it, off she'd go, back to Scotland. Train arrives back in the fiddle yard and the procedure is just reversed. Off comes the loco. Carriage is pushed back by hand. Pushed back onto the cassette. Find the sponge. Slot the cassette back into its place. And the final bit, this safety device. And that's it, as far as the cassettes go. I get four more trains, which is very useful. With a gap in the up trains, the pickup is now able to depart. I'm sorry that little ground doll there doesn't work. Work in progress, I think, is the description. Because there's nothing on the up lines for quite some time, according to the working timetable, this relatively slow train can actually be given the fast road and the respective down working, the down pickup working. Again, the Bobbies told the driver, who probably knew anyway, that he'd be put inside, so no need for the peg to be pulled off. And it does the same manoeuvre as seen earlier but in this case I'm actually going to do some shunting believe it or not this train is equipped with Spratt and Winkle semi-automatic couplings all the pickups both pickups are equipped with those and you can hear the ticking of the couplings as they pass over the magnets. Loco, an Anchorage J39 built by Alan Hammett. Here we go. Note those ticking couplings. These are far less obtrusive than the dreaded tension locks. In this case, we're picking up four loaded limestone wagons. There are many quarries in this part of the world. And for every 10 ton block, you get a ton of rubble. But this was of great use in the iron and steel industry. Limestone was used as a flux, a separating flux, in the blast furnaces of Rotherham or Scunthorpe. Train is made up now and waits for its path. It's going to be passed by the King's Cross York empty stock train. In this case hauled by a DJH B161, entirely the work of Tony Geary. And note the Royal Mail carriage please, on its way to York for repair. Please also note that every train is lamped up correctly. Proper lamps nothing else on Little Bible.
here we have a colic to New England and probably eventually Fern Park full minerals. Same train you saw earlier, but this time with a different locomotive. A little engine's 048, a rebuild of the original Robinson 04. This loco is not available RTR. Any mineral trains you'd see through Little Bison are more likely to have originated or going to the Nottingham pits. Anything from the Yorkshire pits in general went through Lincoln and then down the joint line. A parley, an all stations parley, the name originating from Victorian times when the railway companies had to provide at least one train per day which stopped at every station on a route at no more than one penny per mile. And here we have a Newcastle Partners J6 on a three set, Gresley non gangway three set made by Tony Geary. The carriage working notices I have tend to show these trains as being gangwayed, but just about every picture I found, prototype picture I found, show almost any type of carriage used on them. One train, the like of which has gone forever, is the water train. Obviously, places like Little Bytham, the signal box would be provided by water, in this case from a tank on the station roof, but boxes like Stoke had no water, so it was delivered once a week. With the other trains gone, off goes the down pickup. Next stop, Corby Glen, and it's passed by the most famous train of the day, the non stop, the Elizabethan, Edinburgh to King's Cross, hauled exclusively by an A4. In this case, a Golden Age A4. I really have no idea why I bought this model. I've built about 20 A4, so why would I need to buy? a very expensive one, even more expensive because I had to have the DCC stuff taken out. I must have been daft. You'll often see captions in books saying what a come down for an A4 or a Pacific or in the goods train. Not in this case. This is the Scotch goods. Very fast King's Cross to Edinburgh, fitted much faster than the Lynn to Nottingham 3 set going on the M and GM. No, this was a toppling job, often hauled by an A4. In fact, I saw Miles Beevor on just such a train. We got a load of A4s all of a sudden. The spotters would be whooping for joy. In this case, it's an old Wills one on a scratch-built chassis. Built by me, painted by Ian Rathbone. Silverlink, the doyen of the class on a Newcastle Express. And please note, like most Newcastle Expresses of the day, the catering is a Gresley triplet set. I suppose many light engines would have just trundled down through Lincoln and the joint line, but I've reasoned that the occasional one would use the main line, as here. A part scratch-built J52. Beautifully weathered by Jeff Haynes. This loco was donated for cancer research, so I paid some money for it to the charity. It was built by Derek Johnson.
the tea time Pullman. When I was at school, some dope called it the tea time Pullman, but we'll let that go. Gain a southeastern fine class Pacific, A4 Pacific, in this case painted by Jeff Haynes, and the train a mixture of modified Hornby and Backman cars, weathered by Tim Shackleton. As a last gasp to try and keep these local stations open, in the summer of 1958, DMUs were provided from Peterborough to Lincoln on a service which ran along the main line as far as Barkston and then branched on. Unfortunately, it wasn't a success and a year later all the intermediate stations were closed and were demolished with almost indecent haste. And here we have probably one of the most controversial engines of all time. Great Northern, rebuilt by Thompson of the original Grizzly Pacific. Six O one one three is now way past Corby Glen, and the DMU can now be routed from the down slow to the down fast. Now this is Backman RTR DMU. There's no way I could build one anything as well as this. Note the blind, please, saying Lincoln, one of Ian Wilson's Pacific products. Heaviest train on the line of the day was the cliff in Kent, Uddingston cement block train. And here we have a view of four of those seven down kickback sidings, hidden behind the scenic break. Train reverses out, again without fuss or failure, and it too is going to take the road from the down slow to the down fast. Model Loco 9F, built by me, painted and weathered by Jeff Haynes, and the whole train, built from Airfix kits, is the work of Rob Kinsey. I horse traded with Rob. I built him two EM gauge South Wales locomotives. I think I got the better of the deal. Dring houses in York was the starting point for many of the long distance fitted goods. Now there were no water facilities, loco water facilities, that little by them, so this is a passing move. And as usual, passenger trains took precedence over goods trains. Even a humble all stations parley like this four set built beautifully by John Holden. The loco built from an anchorage kit is the work of Tony Geary. I'm very lucky to have the wonderful work of so many friends running on Little Bison. Does it look as if I'm concentrating? I can tell you I was, and I'm not a butcher by way. Anyway, off goes the parley, next stop Essendai, which means it'll actually have to cross over to the slow line at some point just north of Essendai. Once it's out of the way, the fitted goods get the peg from the up slow to the up fast. Again, once more, at the risk of repetition, train made up mainly of kits. Quite a few, astonishingly, built by me, because really I'm responsible for most of the passenger rolling stock. I leave the freight to others. And that freight returns to the video.
you can see some of the trains to the left which have already appeared. And above the one above the train, the Yorkshire Pool. The point has been switched to the dead end kickback siding. I keep on stressing the need for 100% reliability on pulling and pushing and I hope these images prove that. And so to the finale. The Edinburgh King's Cross Afternoon Talisman called by yet another DJH Alcazar, built by me, painted by Ian Rathbone. The fastest of all the long distance trains. And so, by way of a finale, I just set up four trains, up slow, up fast, down fast, down slow, switched on the boxes and let the trains to it.
and by way of finishing this layout which is the culmination of all my years work would not have been possible without the help of so many of my dear friends without you we wouldn't be watching this and finally without the wonderful editing of my dear friend Chris Walsh you'd be seeing nothing